بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه هداه أما بعد الحمد لله ما شاء الله the جمع and the gathering of the brothers uh, has يعني amazed us somewhat I mean when they said that some of the brothers were coming down some of the young brothers were coming down we were expecting a minibus minibus or two yeah يمكن but ما شاء الله يعني your وجوه and your faces indicates the khair that our marakis up and down the country were bil khusus the ikhwa at Masjid al-Sunnah in Cranford. Yani the efforts that they put forward in nurturing our shabab and in being concerned with the cultivation of our youth. Ayuh al-ikhwa, there is no doubt that it is a blessing, particularly at your young age, to have a desire for the sunnah, a desire for practicing the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal in this era of yani, TikTok and YouTube and what have you, it is easy for the shabab to be misdirected. And it is easy for someone who is young to fall into that which most youngsters fall into. But you should know that at your young age, that Allah Azza wa Jal places within your heart a desire for the sunnah here in the UK, and a desire to practice the sunnah and practice the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, it is a ni'mah and a blessing that you should never take for granted. Wallahi, ni'mah, azimah, jiddan, jiddan, jiddan. And so, yani, while you are present, uh, and after you leave, ushkur Allah Azza wa Jal, give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing, because indeed, it is something, brothers and sisters, that we should never underestimate its tremendousness. Allah Azza wa Jal, has blessed us with this deen after sending the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to this ummah and him establishing the sharia the best of the shara'i' the best of the versions of islam that Allah azza wa jal has sent to any prophet and any messenger when we say versions because of the fact that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned that indeed the anbiya ikhwatun li allat deenuhum wahid wa shara'i'u shatta that indeed the anbiya are ikhwa li'allat. They are brothers who have the same uh, father but different mothers. And then he explained what he intended by way of that. Deenuhum wahid wa shara'i'u shatta. Their deen is one, but the shara'i', the versions of the sharia may have differed. Yani, uh, some of the prophets and messengers may have been given some of the things that other prophets were not given. And some things were possibly nullified and abrogated in one sharia that was present in uh, another. And indeed this sharia, the sharia of Muhammad sallallahu was lightened. Yani the burden was lightened for Bani Israel. They were given and were sent prophets and messengers, but they had difficulty placed upon them because of the burden that they themselves caused upon themselves. When they themselves were... Uh, uh, negligent number one and number two that they went beyond bounds in relation to implementing what the prophets and messengers were given then Allah Azza wa Jal made the affair more difficult for them because they chose difficulty and so this ummah has been raised above and this burden has been alleviated from this ummah yani the burden that was placed upon Bani Israel was alleviated from this ummah and so Allah Azza wa Jal has given this ummah a sharia and a deen that is easy. Easy. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that he removes from them al-aghlal alati kanat alayhim. And he removes from this ummah the aghlal or the fetters that used to be upon the people. That is, the difficulty that used to be upon them. If you wanted, for example, uh, uh, in or during Bani, or at the time of Bani Israel, if you waged war, مثلاً, then the spoils of war were not halal. Uh, when uh, they commit a particular sin, then Allah Azza wa Jal legislated upon them that those who did not commit that sin should kill those who committed the sin. Yani, there were some forms of legislation that were, uh, were, were heavy upon them. But Allah Azza wa Jal has lightened that for this ummah. That is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yajib al shukr it is imperative that we give thanks for these blessings, brothers. And so, with that being said, that which we are in, yani are standing within, 
as you know, and it is not yani, unclear to any one of you, is a house from the houses of Allah Azza wa Jal. Our da'wah, brothers, is a da'wah that revolves around the establishment of the ibadah of Allah, the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. And that is what the people of Sunnah do. That when Allah Azza wa Jal gives them capability, they establish the salah. Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned, الَّذِينَ إِنْ مَكَنَّاهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَآتَوا الزَّكَاةِ وَآمَرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَهُوا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَلِلَّهِ آقِبَةُ الْأُمُورِ Those who, when we establish them in the earth, أَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ They establish the salah. When we give them ability within the earth, they establish the salah. And so the establishment of the masajid, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, it is from the first of the things. Those who Allah has praised from among the believers, from the first of the things that they do is that they establish the salah. And of course, establishment of the salah revolves around and is tightly connected to establish, establishing places of salah. Yani the masajid, the places where salah is established. And so Allah Azza wa has mentioned, they establish the salah, they give the zakah, and that is from their wealth they spend. They enjoy the good and they forbid the evil. And so when we look at that which is present within the verse, Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned that from the characteristics of the people of Sunnah is establishment of the Salah. That is important, young brothers, because from the most يعني, important of the actions that you can carry out is the establishment of Salah. When you establish the Salah, the more you are ardent and the more you are careful about your prayer, what is the time for salah? Making sure that you've performed them. Being ardent over, being in the masjid if possible. Trying your best to ensure that regardless of what you're doing, that you have concern for the establishment of salah. You maintain that bond with Allah Azza wa Jal, that connection with your Lord. And so one of the things that the shaitan will entice, particularly you young brothers, is to turn away from the salah. Or to be lax with your prayer, to be lax with the salah. The first thing that we will be questioned about Yawm Al-Qiyamah is the prayer. The first of the actions that we will be questioned about Yawm Al-Qiyamah is the prayer. If it is good, then the rest of the actions or the rest of the reckoning will be good, will be easy for him. And so make sure, do not be from among those who neglect your salah and are negligent concerning the salah. Make sure that you're from the people of salah. Allah Azza wa Jal praises the believers for that characteristic. Aqamu salah. They establish the salah. They enjoy the, they give the zakat, they enjoy the good, and they forbid the evil. And this enjoining of the good and forbidding of the evil, again, it is something that requires, or number one, it is from the characteristics of the believers, but it requires that we have knowledge, that we have ilm. We cannot enjoy the good if we're ignorant. And we cannot forbid the evil. If we're ignorant, the one who does not know good, how does he call to it? How does he tell a person that this is good, you should do it? How does he for forbid the evil? Stop doing such and such, it is wrong. And if he tells someone, because a particular action looks bad, looks evil, and that individual says to him, well, what is the evidence from the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal that I cannot do so? then the evidence should be presented. And so it requires that the one who enjoins the good forbids the evil, that he has some ilm, he has some knowledge, that he may enjoin the good correctly and forbid the evil correctly with knowledge. And so it is not, yeah, the one doesn't look embarrassed, embarrassed. It is not embarrassing that you enjoin the good and you don't know what you're saying. Or that you forbid the evil and you don't know what it is you're forbidding. And you don't know the evidence for what you're forbidding. And so for you, to concern yourselves with seeking knowledge is a must. My young brothers, know that the elders that you have among you, they are not going to be with you for a long extended period of time and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. This is a reality. News has just reached us just before arriving at the masjid. News has just reached us of the passing of one of our dear brothers. A brother that is close to me, a neighbor to me. And a brother that was close to the brothers within the community. And the brother had a heart attack. Just now. 
today and has passed away. And the brother Ikhwan was no older than us. Those brothers who are among you, your elder brothers, he was the age of the elders that you have within your community. And now he's gone. Rahimahullah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And so with that being said, know that you are the future. And you're not just the future, you're the near future. And each and every one of us from the elder brothers will tell you, it was just yesterday that we were your age. And it was just yesterday that we were beginning to practice. Just yesterday. And it doesn't feel as though it was more than a few days. And those days have passed extremely quickly. Your elder brother, Sheikh Taqweem, will tell you that these, يعني, this period, it is a period, brothers and sisters, and when we began to practice in the early 90s, then it was, we were just your age. And we would look at individuals our age, grey and old and elderly. We would look at them as old and elderly. Even though, يعني, oh, well, we're not old and elderly, يعني, just yet. Lakin, we would look at them as old and elderly. We would, look at, we would look at them as we have a long way to go to reach their age. And now, subhanallah al azim we see ourselves, ikhwan, uh, reaching yani, the ripe, these ripe years very quickly. And so, consider that. Do not be among the foolish shabab, the foolish youth who waste their years. And then before they know it, they're looking at their 50s and they haven't really achieved much. Or the only thing that they've achieved is amounting dunya. And so, mashallah, nice car. Nice house, but jahil, ignorant concerning the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ignorant concerning what Allah azza wa has made halal and what Allah azza wa has made haram. And if you were to ask them, the majority of them, if they're upon good, then they will say to you, Wallahi, I wish that I'd spent some time learning the deen and studying the deen. Wallahi, I wish I'd spent more time studying the book of Allah. Wallahi, I wish I'd spent more time studying the sunnah. Yani, but it's too late for me now. Though it isn't too late, but that is the reality of most of those who have reached uh, the ages of 50 and above. And so my young brothers, I say to you, it is a blessing that you're here. It is a blessing that you've come with your elders and that you have around you brothers that are concerned about your outcome, brothers that are concerned about your nurturing, brothers that are trying to keep you safe. And they don't look at their actions as uh, يعني, being police or policing you. Look at them as elder brothers who love you, elder brothers who want good for you, elder brothers who when they advise, their advice revolves around 30 years or more in some instances of experience. It's not just yesterday, yesterday our brothers uh, have been upon this path. Take their advice. Listen to them well and listen to them keenly. And if there is anything that I can advise you with, is to spend your time busying yourself with the deen of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And we've said it on previous occasions that Imam al-Bukhari was an a'jami. These are imma, that is he was a non-Arab. Many of the a'imma, ikhwan of the deen, they were a'ajib. They were non-Arabs. That is, they didn't, or Arabic language, Arabic was not their first language. But Allah Azza wa Jal raised them, raised their station with ilm, with knowledge, raised them with understanding to the extent that Imam al-Bukhari, yani, you would nearly not have a dars, whether it is from the durus of tafsir or from the durus of fiqh or from the durus of aqidah or from the durus of hadith, except that you will hear his name and you will hear those ahadith that he collected with his chain of narration, though he was not from the Arab. And similarly, many of the regions that were regions of hadith were filled with non-Arabs. 
regions that are modern day Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan and these regions, yani Afghanistan, these regions were regions of knowledge and hadith, of ulama. And so it was not just the lands of the Arab that Allah Azza wa Jal blessed with people of knowledge, but even the lands of the non-Arab. When you look at Spain, Spain was a region and was a land that was filled with ulama, bright, intelligent ulama. And so many of you, with the level of intelligence that Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed you with, reach for the stars as it is said. Don't, don't consider yourself any less able to become an imam and to become a great alim from the ulama of the muslimin. It is not outside of your capability if Allah Azza wa Jal wills. And so have that aspiration. Consider that. Try and reach for that. Look at this masjid and consider the, the fact that one day perhaps it, it, it will be you upon that member. The ma'had that is behind you. Perhaps one day it will be you teaching the next generation, teaching them the sunnah and carrying this legacy and conveying this legacy. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make it easy for you to mm-hmm. obtain that which is beneficial from knowledge mm-hmm. and to keep you upon this path, even though you're surrounded by what you're surrounded by, to keep you firm upon the way of Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger in the way of the self of this ummah. نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى يوفقنا وإياكم لما يحبه ويرضاه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين